All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the basics of using Ajax with AngularJS. Uh, we've got the same project that we had last time. You can see simple routing is here. We can jump back and forth between the pages. We're going to focus on right now replacing all of these hard-coded elements. As we can see here, everything's just written out and we've hard-coded these numbers in here. We want to replace that with some data that's coming from a JSON file. So we're going to use Ajax to fetch some JSON data and then rebuild this page using that. Okay, so in our routes.js on the main, we're using the main controller. So inside of our main controller, this is where we want to fetch the JSON data and then display it on the page because it's in the main.html file that we want to update. So I've added right here into my injection in the function, I'm adding the HTTP object. This is the thing in Ajax, or sorry, this is the thing in Angular that lets us do Ajax calls. So I'm going to create a variable in scope, first of all, which is going to be called all data. That's going to be everything that I fetch back from my JSON file. I'm going to stick it in there. That's what I'm going to bind my interface to is that all data property. Okay, so let's now create something with the HTTP object. All right, there's the basics. You pass in one object to this HTTP method. Inside there, there's a whole bunch of parameters, but we're just going to use a couple. Bare bones method is going to be get, and the URL of what we're going to fetch is this file right here. Now, typically, we don't have the JSON data as part of our project. We're going off to a server-side resource to fetch it. But for this project, I've got a folder named data, and inside of it is this file, items.json. So from my HTML file, the path is data items.json. That's what we're going to get. Now, once that has been fetched, we have to do something with it. So in Angular, there used to be uh, two methods, one called success, one called error. Those have been deprecated, so you'll see a lot of references to the success and error methods. Those are replaced now with a then method. And inside here, there's two parameters. One is the success function, one is the error function. We can just make them as anonymous functions, like this. They will both be passed back a response. So we'll add that inside here. And we just have to remember that the first one, that is our success. The second one, that is our failure. Like that. OK. Inside here, I want the response. And the response actually has inside of it a property called data. That is the contents of that JSON file. So we're going to take that and we're going to put it into our scope dot all data. There we go. That is our object. That is all the data. So with that set, we can now go into our main.html template. And this is a property that's available to us. All right. Just to demonstrate that this is working, I'm going to create a div with the class well up at the top here. And inside that, I'm going to create a pre-tag, so pre-formatted text. This pre-formatted text right here, we're going to take a variable from Ajax, the all data. I will save this and then go back to our web page. And there it is on, on, the, on, the, main, on the main main page. There is all the data. Now, it's a little bit difficult to read like that. Thankfully, there is a filter that we can use called JSON. So I'm taking this data, and I'm filtering it with this method. And there we are. Now it's nicely formatted on the page. So we're going to replace these items with this data. OK, so I can remove this. I don't really need this in here anymore. Um, so I'm just going to delete it, gone. What we have on our page is just a repetition of these things right here. So we're going to start at this point, and we're going to delete 
everything down the page to the bottom, all of those gone. So we just have this repeating div that we're going to replace. Inside here, we're going to be accessing our all data. That was our property. And if we knew which one we wanted, we could say items number two dot ID. So if I save that, there it is. There's the ID. So out of the array, number two, that's the third item in the array, that gives me the ID. If I was to access name, there it is. There's the name coming up. Okay, so I don't want to just target this one and have to repeat typing everything out myself. I want to actually loop through all these things. So we're going to use the ng repeat directive. And we have item in all data dot items. There we go. So in the all data, we have an array called items. That's what we're going to loop through, and we're going to get each one of these items. This is now going to become item.name. So if I save that, there we are. Look at that. There are all the names coming up. So we can replace these text with descriptions. We can add other things in there. As long as we know what's in the JSON, so there's name, description, price. So if I was to put in the price instead of all of this, we'd see that coming up. Item dot price. Save. There it is. Price coming up instead of description. Change this back to description. There it is. The last thing to fix right here, this number. We don't want a hard code number one for every one of those de uh, details. So item dot ID. That's the number. So we refresh this and then that's number one. Number four. Number six. So our links are all working. The titles, descriptions, and the links are working. We've got all of our data and just had to ch turn this into an ng repeat to loop through that array after we had used our controller and the HTTP method to fetch that data. And then we had our success function. Take the data and put it into a variable on the scope and that binds it to the controller and therefore allows us to put it in our HTML.